Hey guys, how's it going? I am Dunkonia and welcome back to the Overwatch League Roundup. Yes, I'm back for stage two, everyone, and aren't we excited, right? Come on, it was a great end to stage one for the Overwatch League. But before I get into the stage two fixtures for the first week, we have got some things to go over, because obviously I don't have results to report to you, because, you know, there's been a week where we haven't had Overwatch League. It's been crazy, right? So let's refresh our minds. How did stage one end in standings? New York Excelsior still top the standings at seed one. We have Outlaws in second, London Spitfire in third, our champions of stage one. Los Angeles Valiant in fourth, Seoul Dynasty in a surprising fifth, Boston in sixth, Philadelphia in seventh, Los Angeles Gladiators in eighth, San Francisco Shock in ninth, and a surprising tenth for Dallas Fuel, eleventh for Florida Mayhem, and twelfth for Shanghai Dragons. But I think this is going to change. Now... Moving on, we know our we know our little standings, but we have had obviously the transfer window is open, has been for a bit of time now, but as of the start of stage two, I believe the 21st of February, we will get the new players signed for each team. They will be eligible to play, which is a big deal. Now let's run through the transfers that we know about, that are confirmed that on and are unofficial, right? So. For Dallas Fuel, I already spoke about this in the earlier videos, AKM has signed for Dallas Fuel. He was a free agent before, he is a DPS player, well known for his Soldier 76. A very good addition to the Dallas Fuel, and I think it gives him a bit more diversity. But the Dallas Fuel aren't stop, are not going to stop there, but I'm going to do the unofficial ones that haven't been announced yet later on. Moving on, we have the San Francisco Shock signing Junk Bunk who is going to be a coach for the Shock, which I think they do need. I think they need a bit of... They just need a bit of adjusting, right? In the right direction. But the big one, and I suppose we kind of expected it, was the Shanghai Dragons. Now, it was ruined for a long time, but we have our first female Overwatch League player in Gaguri. She is a tank player for the Shanghai Dragons now. She's well known for her Zarya, but she's also very good on mainly off tanks, Diva, and a bit of Roadhog. Sky. Sky is a support who was a free agent. He is going to be now playing for the Shanghai Dragons. Fearless. He is from Element Mystique. He is a tank and now playing for the Shanghai Dragons, as well as Addo, who was, for, who was playing for MVP Space. He is now a DPS for the Shanghai Dragons. Four signings for the Dragons. Pretty big. If I remember rightly, they already had seven players, so now they have 11 players to choose from. They've really expanded things here. So, moving on to the Florida Mayhem. Yes, we ha we, we've had a few. Not quite as many as uh, Shanghai, but a few for Florida. The main one of these is we knew about it before the, before the end of Stage 1, but Zappis, who is a tank, has signed. as He was a free agent before. He'll be a tank for the Florida Mayhem. Going to offer them some more options because Florida Mayhem did have the smallest roster. Sayer player will also be signing for Meta Anthena and he is a DPS. That also takes the pressure off Logix who I think Logix has good days and bad days and I think he need, you need a backup for your DPS when it comes to Florida Mayhem because you can't always rely on Logix whereas Tavik can he can kind of keep going. Also they have signed a, a coach for Meta Anthena I don't know how to say it, R2DER, whether it's Raider or whether it's Rituda, I don't know. But that's the confirmed signings we've had so far. Obviously the window is open until April the 3rd, so there can be a lot more signings before then. Now I'm going to go move on to some that are unofficial. They seem pretty strong that they might happen. They've been rumoured, but they're not official. So these won't be, will not be playing in the first week of Stage 1. Because they can't, unless they get signed in time after this recording. So, bear that in mind, you may not see these yet. But, Rascal. Rascal is currently a London Spitfire player, right? He is in talks, apparently, with Dallas Fuel. If Dallas Fuel sign Rascal, because obviously Rascal is not... London Spitfire are currently running a, a roster of 12. The old Kongdu, Panthera, and the GC Busan rosters. Obviously... You've got to look at it, and at the start of the season, we were wondering, how are they going to maintain this? 12 players? 
and I think this is them starting to like uh, sift through the players they want to keep and want to perhaps move on. Rascal may be one of these players that moves on because obviously we've seen Prophet and Birdwing. And Prophet and Birdwing are one hell of a DPS duo. They certainly showed up in the end of stage one. And I'm not sure whether Rascal is going to be able to muscle these guys out at the moment. So he is apparently in talks with Dallas Fuel. This will be an incredible signing for Dallas Fuel because even though Rascal is not getting in the London Spitfire team, he is still a very, very good player. And he can show other sides to doing things like if you remember from the pre-season of the overwatch league he did play for london spitfire on horizon and economy defense and he played may which is a very interesting utilization of may and he has a varied hero pool so it could be very interesting i think we mainly see him seen him on projectile so this is very interesting for dallas fuel and it gives them an i think you it would give them an other option compared to seagull i know we all love seagull but we can't expect him to do everything, right? Moving on. Again, this this involves London Spitfire. But it also involves the Eddie Gladiators. Fisher is a London Spitfire tank currently, right? And he's kind of fallen behind Gesture, Fury, and Uyal. So Fisher is looking, apparently, to move on to the LA Gladiators. Again, he's a main tank. So this would be very, very good for the Gladiators. It gives them a bit more... Uh, uh, some more options and I think I think this would be a good signing for the gladiators to be quite honest I think the gladiators need shoring up they're very inconsistent and if they could find some consistency they could be right up with the other LA even with Houston so if they can find that consistency in stage 2 it would be a team to watch out for but moving on a team who surprised us and not for good reasons in stage 1 was Sol Dynasty now, Soul Dynasty obviously run the old Lunatic High roster. And it's not a full roster. And they are looking to add to that roster. And apparently, this is again unofficial, they are looking to add to the support with Gambler, who would be from Blossom. I don't know much on Gambler, but it sounds like a very good signing. And obviously, I think Soul have had some problems with their Mercy play. But again, do you really need to sign... You need to sign someone who can play Mercy, right? Toby is a fairly good Mercy, but he's been caught out with his positioning at times. And I think that's what's caused Sol some problems. I don't know what Gambler plays. Actually, I could just look it up, I suppose, couldn't I? I could just be sensible, right? Whew. Um, the Gambler was a core component of Luxury Watch Blue that finished third in the second season of Overwatch Apex in Korea. And he knows very well t uh, people like Sabi Orbi, Yanis, and Mecco. Not all on the not on Seoul, obviously. But this is a good signing. I think Seoul did need reinforcements because obviously they're going wrong somewhere. And I think their supports was iffy again. I'm not also sure whether it might have been the coaching because the, the the roster put out against certain teams at times was a bit iffy, right? I know we all say Rouge Hong should be playing every single time, but perhaps Rouge Hong shouldn't be playing against people like Florida? No offense, Florida. Perhaps slightly the lower tier teams in the leagues in the league, but then when you come up against something like London Spitfire or NYXL or Houston or LA Valiant. Rouge Hong could be extremely powerful if he pops off in those games, so I think you should save him for those games rather than um, chancing it, right? And the last one I wanted to go over is NYXL. Now, who would have thought NYXL would need a signing, hey? Yes, they lost the final of Stage 1 to London Spitfire, but they are top of the rank, right? They're rank 1 right now. And they're looking pretty good. They're the only team to have only lost one game. They have the best results so far. But they're looking to add their support line with Animo. Now, again, I'm not too clued up on the Korean side of things, okay? So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into massively what it is, but apparently Animo is a really, really, really good shot caller. And if you have a really good shot caller on a team on your team, you know 
that you're going to do fairly well because if you have coordination in comms from shot calling then you can focus down someone so well that a lot of the other stuff from your team your mechanical play and your positioning will fall into place so this could be a really really good signing for NYXL but that's the transfers covered right next again this is going to be one hell of a video going over a few things but obviously for stage stage one we had just one map pool right for stage two we're going to get a different map pool now I rumored whether Blizzard World will be in this map pool it isn't as far as we know so their maps for stage two first map will be an assault map in every game and the two maps available in the assault maps will be Hanamura or Volskaya Industries. Again, we should see we should see some very interesting comps on Volskaya and Hanamura. Um, Hanamura, notably, uh, remember the uh, Korea, South Korea versus USA game in the World Cup. Hanamura really gave us a game, so I'm hoping to see some more. Now, the second map will be a control map. As far as we know right now, unless there's any changes to this, they may well do, because that's what Overwatch League are like. They're finding their feet right now. But the control maps will be Li Zhang Tower or Nepal. So we've seen Li Zhang Tower as a tiebreaker in the last stage, and it's going to be a main map now along with Nepal. We haven't seen Nepal yet. And of course, in with Nepal, you have Nepal Sanctum, which is Arissa and Roadhog Heaven with the big pit. So expect Arissa and Roadhog to be uh, pulling some people down that hole very soon. Now, of, after the control map, our third map will be Hybrid. And I'm sure the LA teens have been waiting for this one. It'll be on Hollywood. Or, I'm sure London have been waiting for this one. It'll be on King's Row. I know I've been waiting for King's Row for a while. And I think we should see more Reinhardt on King's Row. It'll be interesting to see, and Hollywood will be in another interesting one as well, because there's a lot of high ground going into that point. So, it'll be interesting to see how these maps play out. And the fourth map will be an escort map, uh, currently, and it will be on either Route 66 or Watchpoint Gibraltar. Very interesting. All very interesting. I don't currently know the best of three tiebreaker map that, w that will be used. Um, I would assume it is a control map from stage one so if i have a look at the stage one control maps it could it could either be it could either be horizon or temple of anubis but well it remains to be seen it remains to be seen i think i think it sh probably will be an, an, an assault map or control map so i'd expect either horizon or temple of anubis but we'll see we'll see you know, it's all very interesting. Hold on, wait a minute. I've just noticed something. What am I talking about? They have mixed the order up of Assault Control Hybrid and Escort. So it could be a control map. That's what I'm trying to say. God, I'm getting this video totally wrong today. I'm saying it could be a control map. So Ilios or Oasis. It might be Oasis, actually. I think Oasis has been used as a tiebreaker before in certain other competitions. But as terms of end of stage go, it's the same as last time. Top three teams go through to the stage playoffs. Now, one big question some people have been asking. Do the standings from the last stage count to the playoffs? No, they don't. This stage two will have its own standings. And the top three of the stage two standings will go through to the playoffs. Otherwise, people who build up a big lead over the season may ju it just become ridiculous to even play playoffs at stages. So the finishers in the top, the top three finishers for stage two standings will go through to the playoffs. Obviously, these standings will be put together with stage one standings because it will define what happens at end of season. This will go over five weeks as it did last time, and if there's a few timing changes. If you are living in the GMT timeline, then all the ma all the matches or all sh should we say Overwatch League streams will start at midnight if they're on a weekday. The Saturday ones haven't changed, but they will start on a midnight instead of I believe one start the first one started at the midnight, 
then the second one started at, t at 10 p.m., then the one after started at midnight, and then you had the Saturday matches. Obviously, if you are on EU time, I believe it is an hour later, so one o'clock in the morning, I think. They wanted to bring in more consistency, consistency with timings. I know that doesn't really help us. <laughs> it really doesn't help us in, in, in the, on this side of the world, but hey, it's what we have to deal with for now. Obviously, in Season 2, they're on about having everyone in their own country, so it'll be interesting. One other thing that's changed is the playoffs. The playoffs for Stage 1 were held after the end of the Stage 1 regular fixtures on the Saturday. This time they will be held on the Sunday. This is a very, very good change because obviously, um, even though London Spitfire won Stage 1, they played 14 matches in a day. Yeah, nasty. Three games. Uh, so this is a really good change to prevent play player fatigue. And to give us proper outcomes in the playoffs anyway. So the playoffs will now be on a Sunday instead of the end of the day Saturday. So that's all really a good change. That has covered all of our stuff I believe. Now we can actually do something and go into the fixtures. For the first week of stage 2. Oh yes I've been waiting for this one. So stage 2. Week 1. It's going to be pretty much a carbon copy of stage one week five the Seoul dynasty will take on the Los Angeles Valiant at midnight on Thursday the 22nd of February Dallas Fuel will take on the Shanghai Dragons are uh, at 2 a.m. on February the 22nd all times GMT remember Los Angeles Gladiators will take on the San Francisco Shock at 4 a.m. Friday the 23rd of February, we will get the Houston Outlaws taking on the London Spitfire. Rematches all round, hey? At midnight. At 2 a.m., New York Excelsior will take on the Florida Mayhem. At 4 a.m., Boston Uprising will take on the Philadelphia Fusion. Saturday the 24th at midnight, we will get London Spitfire taking on the New York Excelsior. That's probably the blockbuster match of the weekend. A replay from the Stage 1 final. Dallas Fuel taking on the Los Angeles Gladiators at 2 a.m., and San Francisco Shock taking on Seoul Dynasty at 4 a.m. In fact, they've actually changed the time slightly for the Saturday ones as well. Later on in the Saturday, you will get the Philadelphia Fusion taking on the Florida Mayhem at 9 o'clock. Boston Uprising taking on the Houston Outlaws at 11 o'clock. And this then seeps over into the Sunday where... Shanghai Dragons will be taken on the Los Angeles Valiant at 1 a.m. So those fixtures actually have been moved back two hours because I believe before they started at 7, then at uh, 9, and then at 11, which is frustrating. You know, us, us EUs need to get sleep, you know, Overwatch League, but hey, oh well. But that is that is the fixtures for for this week again they're all pretty much rematches from the end of stage one I presume the fixtures are going to go in reverse order I don't know but obviously your big matches looking out for Spitfire versus New York Excelsior Spitfire versus Outlaws big week for Spitfire see if they can continue their good form from the stage playoffs but they need to turn around results that happened at the end of stage one where they did lose to Houston and they lost to New York Excel mind. so another team I'm looking out for Dallas Fuel Shanghai I think who, basically who are going to turn it round in in this stage 2 I think we're going to have to look out for Dallas Fuel especially if they have uh, if confirmed the signing of Rascal and maybe another signing Shanghai Dragons definitely they've made some definite improvements they have signed a Genji player which they needed they definitely definitely needed so that's a really good thing for, for, for Shanghai Dragons. I expect them to get off the off the uh, get something on the board at last because they don't currently have a win. Um, who else do we look out for? If Gladiators can pick up some consistency and get some wins, then I think Gladiators could be up there for Stage Two playoffs. I think it's going to be even closer than Stage One was, which is saying something because Stage One was so close anyway. I mean, I think it went all the way down to seventh in the end. Who could have got into the playoffs? Boston are going to come back stronger, I think. Philadelphia need to work out some consistency because they're dropping way too many maps at the moment. If they can stop dropping so many maps, 
They'll be up there with Valley in Houston. And a big teller will be, can someone stop Excel? Because the NYXL currently are still top of the standings overall. And they are the only team with a 9 and 1 record. The rest of the teams below them, Valiant, Spitfire and Outlaws, namely, and Seoul, are on 7 and 3. So, London have been dragged into the pack slightly. And this was because of the results, the losses to Outlaws, Outlaw and Outlaws and Excelsior at the end of stage 1. It, it caused them to drop back into the pack. And it, it remains to be seen whether they can whether they can get themselves out of this. Because if you think, if they win all of their matches in week one of stage two, they'll be top of it. They'll be top of the standings again. I would I would have thought. If they can beat Houston, they'll definitely be above Houston. Um if they can beat Excel, it comes down to map difference whether they'll get back to the top of the standings, but they'll definitely be top of the standings for stage two. So they may get back to the top of the standings overall. I think it's a big week for London Spitfire. They need to turn up and put these people in their place if they want to put, assert their authority on the league. But, stage two is almost here. It kicks off Thursday the 22nd. Wednesday if you're in a different area. You know, time zones and all that. All time, all time zone GMT time. I will see you next week. In another Overwatch League Roundup video, I'll be watching them. Keep an eye on my Twitter because I'll be making some predictions and I will see you then. See ya!